morning. All right, let's see. First, the bad news. <laughs> like there's ever any good news. Found out last night that a friend that I had met online a couple years ago through the benzo board, um, she lost her son. I don't know how old he was exactly. I'd say not too old. I mean, she's older than me. She's in her early 60s, so imagine he's got to be, you know, late 20s, early 30s. I don't know. And I don't even know the circumstances of what happened. Um, I haven't been able to reach her. I just left a message. But um, she has Lyme disease, severe, like in a wheelchair, was ready to leave next month for stem cell um, therapy. She's very, very bad, very weak, and to have to go through this too. I, I, I can't imagine what it's like to lose your son, your child to begin with, but when you're chronically ill, you had two very close friends lose their sons um, in the last couple years. A couple years ago, and that friend has got MS. She had to deal with it with MS. And her neurologist literally said, told her family, you got to really keep an, a close eye on her because the stress of all this could actually kill her. But she had such a strong faith in God, and God pulled her through. But he committed suicide. Um, the second friend, it was just a year, a little over a year ago, a twin same age as my youngest daughter, so mid-twenties, was still living at home, got up, walked out his bedroom door, and fell flat on his face dead. Apparently he had heart disease. He had an enlarged heart that was congenital and they never knew. He had to watch her go through that, and she, and she witnessed it. She watched her son die right in front of her face. Horrific. Both of them are born again Christians. Thank God that they have their faith, but it's like, Jesus, you can come back now. We're done. We're done. Time to come back. Um, no diarrhea this morning. Slept okay for me, but now I've got this pain under my, it's like way over to the left of my rib cage over the left of my breast. I had it happen last Friday, but by Saturday morning it was gone. And it's like somebody's poking me with a like a like a needle or a, a little knife. It's just every time I move a certain way, it's like this poking feeling and I keep rearranging myself thinking there's something pressing there and no before I even when I was just in my jammies, nothing's pressing on it. So I don't Another thing to obsess about, right? And I don't know if you see it, but I, I, to me, my skin looks yellowish today. Now, maybe I'm just imagining it. Who knows? Could be just my, my camera. But no diarrhea. And my head's not crazy. So those are all good things. But um, so I just popped in to let you know that's how my morning's going. I'm so thinking about her and praying for her. So if you would send up a prayer for this woman, her name's Julie. And um, she's very sick. So. My heart's just breaking for her. As, clearly, why wouldn't it? Um, it? Just seems like everyone around me is sick, and not sick with just minor things, but major things. You know, kidney failure and liver failure. Three people that are close to me: cancer, going through chemo. Just my brother. 
you know, he had that amputation in the summer, and now he's, he's in dialysis, too. Jesus can come back now. Right now. Let's go. Talk to you later. Hi. It's that time. I'm going to get on the treadmill. I go outside because it's beautiful. I mean, it's very sunny and, you know, bright, but it's nine degrees. Nine. Gotta love New York. Gotta love it. Um, <clears throat> so, getting on the treadmill. Just thought I'd pop in and let you know because that's what I do. My head is not crazy. Praise God. I feel a little wired. What else is new? I like my new sneakers. They actually feel good on my feet. And um, everybody likes a brand new pair of sneakers, especially when they use them as much as I do. I mean, I literally, I remember telling the nurse practitioner, she goes, and one another thing is, it's really important. We've got to start an exercise program with you. And I'm like, um, what do you mean? Because I didn't, you know, exercises. That's what she said. And, and I didn't know what she meant exactly. And I said, are you talking about physical exercise? I think I might have mentioned this on another vlog. And I said, um, I walk three miles a day. And she, her eyes went as sick as I am. And I go, and if I'm not outside walking three miles a day, I'm on my treadmill for 30 minutes at four miles an hour. And she was like, wow. And I'm like, yeah. So, I don't know where I went off with that one. Anyways, popped in to let you know I'm getting on the treadmill. <sighs> Trying to ignore this pain on the side before I have to take Motrin because it's such a little pain and it's not constant. It's just, you know, every now and then I feel it and I, I rub. It's right here. It's right, like, right here. You have a lymph node there? Anyway, um, I'll just pop in later because I definitely want to read some of that book to you guys, those excerpts about EBV. Just got off the treadmill, just wiped off. My hair's a little wet still. Wiped all the sweat off, got dressed again. But here's what I wanted to read from you from this book. <clears throat> My husband's um, reading it, but this is what he read to me last night. In most cases, doctors won't be able to identify EBV as the problem because the most advanced medical information out there still says <clears throat> that if a test doesn't detect active EBV in your bloodstream, then the virus is not to blame for your ills. Even if EBV is detected, the likelihood is that it still won't be identified as the source of your health issues because medical communities haven't learned yet what an EBV symptom is. The, furth the furthest they've gotten is to ident identify mono's flu-like symptoms such as fatigue, fever, swollen glands. They don't have a checklist of all those EBV symptoms that come after EBV's mono stage because they don't realize there are symptoms after mono. It's very common to hear that your blood test results show antibodies that indicate a past infection of EBV and that the virus therefore isn't an issue anymore. Don't let this mislead you. EBV tests simply aren't advanced enough yet to detect the virus once it's moved on from mono for more. And then it tells you to read another chapter um, because they have stages, one, two, three, and four. Four being you're pretty much near death. My husband, is he's read further ahead and reading what I'm at, I, you heard him last yesterday on the thing going, well, I think you're about three. And I'm like, holy crap. Anyways, I just wanted to read that to you. Um, something to think about. I said, so, if Lyme tests are not to be trusted and mono EBV tests are not to be trusted, what do you trust? What do you look to? What do you believe? What is right? What is wrong? 
Anyone got an answer to that? Because I sure don't. I have no idea. I, but I'm, some of my labs have come in. I talked to my doctor's office and they're waiting for all of them to come in and then hopefully they will go ahead and <clears throat> um, fax them over to the NP. And as soon as she gets them, we will talk again and take it from there. So I'll check in with you guys later. I'm going to watch a couple vlogs now and get lunch soon and do my routine. What I do every day. Same thing, different day. Okay, so sitting here and I noticed it last night that here was aching. Like, so just now I start feeling and very lumpy. Very this one more than this lymph nodes it seems like every time I go looking yeah this one's more swollen and it's actually it's hurting just thought I'd let you know I'm finding more <clears throat> hmm. seems like everybody who vlogs does this <clears throat> we ought to do it to music. Um, forgive me, I'm trying to clean out my mouth from eating. Uh, <clears throat> so I just wanted to come on and say, yep. This is, they're both swollen, but this one's much more swollen, and that's where I'm feeling pain, along with all this, along with all my nonsense, you know, okay? <laughs> my blog is me coming on, telling you all my aches and pains and problems. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, I don't have anything else to say. I'm watching vlogs. Oh, I know. Probably said this last night. Just got a new bracelet. Just checking it out. Isn't it pretty? It's it's one bracelet, but it's three hooked to one. I just thought it was pretty. Why do I care? My husband says, you like it, buy it. Whatever makes you happy, it's just money. I'm like, wow, it's just money as if we have money. Um... I don't know if I said this last night. And I probably did. But again today, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking for success stories. I beat Lyme. I've, it's been five, 10 years and never had a relapse. Can't find those. It's like, you know, I went certain amount of time and then they relapse I um, went to a support group here you know about an hour away from where I live and I remember when I was at that support group which was a well over it was a year ago well over a year ago that I went to the support group and I remember at that time because at that point I was not convinced anything about Lyme at all I actually remember, you know, walking out and the girl that we drove down with us um, said to me, so now do you believe you have Lyme? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, after I talked to these people. But anyways, I remember at that support meeting, there wasn't a person there. Even the person who was mo being the moderator, she had been having relapses for years. You know, you, there was somebody there 30 years battling this and, and still would, you know, go into remission, but not not healing it. And and my line litter doctor said to me, you can be healed of this. Well, where are the people who are healed of it? Please show me. Come on here and introduce yourself because I want to talk to you. I want to call you on the phone and I want to talk to you and I want to know what you had to do to get healed. Because I haven't met anyone so far that's actually beaten this completely. 
positivity, right? I'm just such a positive person. Nah. But, yep, more, more swollen. Getting them more everywhere I look. At least the thing under here stopped hurting. Praise God. Um, stopped bothering me after I was on the treadmill. I just ate lunch, and as soon as I get done eating, my stomach goes... Anyway, talk to you guys later. Hi. Gonna, it just came up on my bed. Sun is sh shining pretty bright. Just wish it was warm. I think it's up to 19 degrees now. My neck is really hurting. Should probably put some castor oil on it. It's so gooey and messy though. But um, I'm gonna start digging into the book. And with my brain, uh, today's a day to do it because I don't. I, I just described it to my friend. I don't have the gushy mushy cobweb can't see straight head today so today would be the day to read the book the truth behind Hashimoto's graves insomnia really hypothyroidism thyroid nodules and Epstein-Barr Anthony William so it says, the meaning behind today's widespread thyroid illness is so much bigger than anyone has yet discovered. What you're about to read is unlike any information you've ever seen. It's time for you to take control and become a true thyroid expert. Discover the real reasons and the healing path for dozens of symptoms and conditions, including, but not all-inclusive, aches and pains. Let's name off the ones I have. Anxiety and depression. Autoimmune disease, pretty sure I have that. Brain fog and focus. Cancer. Might, might have lymphoma, but we don't know. Epstein-Barr, don't know. Pregnancy complications, praise God, no. Fatigue. Mononucleosis, mon yeah, no. Fibromyalgia, another one, so we're on six. Um, hair thing, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Headaches and migraines, heart palpitations, vertigo, hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism, menopausal, menopausal, menopausal symptoms, mystery weight gain, and I just said I've been starting to weight gain, gain weight, sleep disorders, tingles and numbness, and that's just some. So, well, that was 14 out of the... Twenty one that they list here. Anyways, I'm gonna start reading it. I just thought I'd pop in and let you know that I'm gonna start read woo, reading it. Um, because this would be a good time since I might be able to actually read and understand what the freak I'm reading. Because most days I can't I can't read. I don't know if I ever mentioned this before, but I don't watch T V at all. The T V never goes on until between seven and eight PM. For some reason, my mind settles down at that point and I can watch. I can watch vlogs, but that's about it because they're just, you know, 15-minute little vlogs. Um, but I can't watch TV during the day at all. Mm -mm. Don't even turn it on. Um, so it kind of um, limits me as to what I can do during the day. Because I know a lot of people like to like just watch a movie or something, pop a movie in, and I just can't, just can't. Um, that swollen node has come down since earlier. I don't know. I don't know what the freak I'm feeling. Anyway, okay. So um, my last vlog, I'll try to maybe share some of what I've read. That's if I can remember what the freak I've read. Okay. Um, and by the way, um, Jen, I think my word is going to be tinkle. Not twinkle. Tinkle, like tinkling go potty. My tinkle of the day. How's that? Because you know I got to be different. I got to be goofy. 
Maybe it'll be Twinkle. I don't have any Twinkles of the day, though. Oh, wait, that my head's not goofy and queer and weird. Okay, that's my Twinkle Tinkle of the day. Talk to you later. Hi. <clears throat> well, oh, I can't fix my pillow. Um, apparently, you probably all have noticed it, is that book that I was going to start reading and had quoted stuff out of it. The guy's a nutcase. I didn't know that, but a friend of mine, Julie, mentioned his name. And I said, yeah, that's author. And she goes, yeah, he, he believes in a higher power, but I don't know who that higher power is. And then I read that, yeah, he uh, thinks he can diagnose people because the higher power tells him. And I don't believe in that stuff unless it's absolutely he's giving God the glory and he speaks of Jesus and he doesn't. So, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> All of a sudden. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was reading the book, and in it he makes a statement that Lyme is not bacterial, that it is a, that is viral. And right there, of course, red flags go up, and he says, well, read, you know, read my first book, blah, blah, and I talk about it, now I explain it. And then I realize, what is he talking about? How could Lyme be viral if it's passed through a bug? Or maybe I'm an idiot and I'm not understanding science all that well. But anyway, um... And I feel just exhausted. Very fatigued lately. My head's not woozy. You know, like I said earlier. But um, very fatigued. Like I could take a nap, but I just... I don't. I'm so tired and... It's only 4.30 in the afternoon. <coughs> anyway, I'm going to sign off. I don't have anything <coughs> else to add for the day. Um, I don't plan on going out or doing anything. So, that's it for the day. Nothing else to add. Um, so, Lord willing... We'll be back at it tomorrow. Pray for the peace and comfort on all of us. Pray for sleep. Pray that my labs come in and get an answer. Or else I'm going to have to wait all the way till next week. Which is probably going to be the case. I'm sure that that will be the case, but... I do have to talk to my doctor tomorrow, the Lyme doctor, and see if he, he'll probably tell me to start back on the antibiotics now that I haven't had diarrhea today. So I'll start back on the antibiotics and see what happens. All right. You all have a good night. I'll see ya.